Hello, hello everyone. This is Ken Hi. Barton, CEO of Cupid, and I am here with the lovely Carabelle. <laughs> Happy Monday. <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, all right, Kara, so we are here for another Matchmaker training today. Tell us what we are going to be talking about today. Well, you're in control of the slides. So the first topic is expectation setting. Um, and basically, we're going to talk a little bit or dive into setting up your client matchmaker expectations, which I think is really mm -hmm. super duper important. Once you have clients in, you're doing the searching, you're doing the screening and the selecting. Um, now it's time to welcome yourself to your client. Um, I always feel like the best way to set the tone is with a Zoom call. I think it's really important that once your um, client it has basically you're going to be their matchmaker, um, they've hired you to to do this a very important task for them. I think it's important that you just introduce yourself. I think it's important that they see a face with a name, that they hear your voice. Um, yep. they, they feel so relieved because what happens is this is something that a lot of people really want to do. But you know, within 24 hours of people signing up, that's usually when people are going to say, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? They have right. those doubts. So right. what we want to do is we want to extinguish that right away. You want to make sure that your uh, client feels welcome, comfortable, and is excited to go on this journey with you. So my suggestion is to either if you can't set up a Zoom call or you're not comfortable um, meeting your clients over Zoom, then set up a phone call. Once again, just a voice um, with the name is going to be crucial. Very, very yes. helpful. Well, Kara, um, can I interject real quick? So sure. an important feature of Cupid, um, which because we haven't launched yet, and Kara is actually part of our beta test, so she's going to be joining us tomorrow on the app. She gets in early because she's been such an amazing contributor to the community. Um, we actually have it where you go on those calls in the app. So Kara, like a lot of what we're going to talk about today is like keeping yourself, like keeping your sanity, right? Mm. Keep the expectations set. You know, you're a matchmaker, but you're not like, you're not going to solve every problem in their life. You can't be responsible right. for that. You're not their therapist, but you play a quasi role. So as a, <laughs> right, you go, it's going to happen. So as a matchmaker, things that will happen are whenever someone like is interested in meeting you, they can actually book a time on your schedule through the Cupid app, and they can book a video or voice call. And why we did this, Kara, we wanted to make sure matchmakers don't have to get out their personal cell phone, mm -hmm. you know, set it away, you can turn off the app at night. Like if your client has a date, doesn't go so well, it's okay. It can wait until the morning. Your job is not to like therapist for three hours after right. a bad date. So you should never have to go on Zoom or a phone call. You can do everything in the app. I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay. That's great. Because I've had uh, clients that want to have a therapy session after their date for three hours. And I'm like, yeah, we can, let's see. I want you to marinate in that and we'll talk about it tomorrow. So well, let's hope you can charge them for it. That's the real dream, right? right? Like well, it's the, fine as long as you bill them. <laughs> in the future, you know, with the relationship coaching that you're talking about, the that yeah. matchmakers have the ability to do, you'll find Absolutely. out that some of these clients probably need a little coaching. So there's 100%. an opportunity for you down the road. Um, so once again, once you're introducing yourself, re review their profile with them. You really want to talk about and get a, get a good sense of who they are. Um, I like to talk about, you know, where they were born and raised. Some people think I'm crazy, but to me, that gives me a, a sense of how they were raised. People from the Midwest were raised a little differently, um, in terms of people from the South. So where mm -hmm. were they born and raised? What are they looking to accomplish out of this matchmaking? And most importantly, what are your preferences? Um, you'll talk a lot about preferences uh, in your matches, and you need to make sure that you are really actively listening to your client. That is very important. Um, also, maybe some dating challenges they've had. Everybody's here for a reason, and they've had mm -hmm. challenges, whether it's because of uh, they don't like the apps, um, maybe they get in the way of themselves. Maybe they're tired of their friends fixing them up with people that are not really compatible. So learning a little bit about their dating challenges kind of helps you and gives you some insight as to maybe patterns that they have. Um, once again, maybe they're getting in the way of themselves, but it's just mm -hmm. really important to know your client. 
uh, know their personalities, um, know what drives them, and know why they chose you to be their matchmaker. Um, I think also setting the expectation and the tone for communication, letting your client know when you're going to be um, checking in with them, how often. This is so helpful because um, my last dating agency that I work for, oh my gosh, every, Ken, if 100, if 100 people called a day, 500 people called a day with questions about what is my next match or just questions that could have been avoided altogether by setting up that expectation of communication. Mm. How often are you going to communicate with your client? What's the method in which they should expect for you to communicate? Is it text? Do they prefer a phone call? Um, do mm -hmm. they prefer to schedule a, a, a quick video call with you? Whatever it is, allow that client to uh, to, to feel good about it, the method that they want to be communicated with. Um, once again, it's going to alleviate a lot of questions and a lot of phone calls on a daily basis. Have you found a match yet? Um, so just let them know. So wait, Kara, let's pause there and talk about that for a second. So what do I do? So let's say you're a brand new matchmaker, right? And you're so excited because what happened is you went out with your friends last weekend, you went to brunch and you talked to your friends and like they brought three friends of theirs and two of them signed up with you. So boom, like you've got two clients. You are making money. You are now expected to find some singles and like do some searching and screening and selecting. But here's the problem. There, there's two issues. Number one, you have this brand new person, two totally different people, right? That you have to get to right. know and learn about them. They create their profile on Cupid because that's how they subscribe to you. But all you get is very basic information, gender, race, you know, age, uh, description, what they're looking for. Like all those things are really, really simplistic. So, right. you know, do you start out with, I mean, do you have a script that you use? Do you have like bullet points that you go through? Do you have like, how do you, do you just feel it out by the person? Like, how do you suggest I start? Well, that's a great question. Um, well, I used to have bullet points that I would follow, um, okay. starting out. So just the, the, some, and some of the basic or common bullet points, I'll kind of, uh, review right. with you in terms of preferences, like you're going to see some common preferences, um, age, okay. ethnicity and race, mm -hmm. right? Religion. And you'll want to find out like how religious are you? Uh, how important is that? Is it that your mate goes to church with you if it's somebody religious? Synagogue, yeah, and right. whatever it but is, right? Whatever right. it is. Um, and it's important that as a matchmaker, if you don't know about, you know, maybe some of these races, ethnicities, um, and some of the cultures, religions, everything. Yeah. Um, educate yourself a little bit about it. All right. Right. Um, right. gender, of course, is a big thing. What genders are you looking for? Um, some people are bisexual. Maybe they are open to dating both male and female, but make sure that you know that, um, before you even start to search for your clients. Marital status. It's a big one. Some people say, <laughs> I never want anybody that's been married. Um, I don't want anybody that's that's widowed or divorced or the big one is I don't want anyone that's separated because I think a lot of people feel like there's room for that person. There's no closure in that past relationship. Oh, them. you mean like when someone actually hasn't been divorced. So they were like married exactly. and they're not hanging out with them anymore, but legally they're still bound. Exactly. And I mean, that's a big red flag to me too. Yeah. yeah I is. get it. And, and some people are just in the, the final stages. I mean, everybody has a story. It could be that they've been separated for 17 years, Ken, and they just mm. now this year said, let's, let's uh, get mm. it in black and white. Right. So you'll, you'll want to ask those things. How long right. have you been separated? And you'll want to communicate that to your client too. This person right. separated, but here's Got the it. story behind it. Right. Just, once again, making them feel comfortable. Marital status, uh, I think I just covered. Height, a lot of people, they got to be 6'2". <sighs> so, okay, Kara, that's a great question, though. So, you know, as someone who's six foot five, like, I think that's hilarious. I will never have this problem, right? Like, I've never been like, oh, he's too tall for me. Never once, which is like, what a privilege, never. right? But here's my question. So... Let's say I'm a new matchmaker and I get some, you know, I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about female clients. Although, you know, sometimes men have height requirements too. Maybe men say they're too tall, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the question is like, Kara, what do we do about these things that we say to ourselves, my client is picky and they're hiring me to be picky. This is all about expectations, right? 
Right. They're hiring me to be picky and help them, but I think they're going to hurt themselves here. So how do we start with that kind of conversation? Like in this intro call, like what things do you push back on? What things do you not push back on? I think there, I mean, there's some room for flexibility and mm -hmm. the, the areas that I've seen that are, or can be flexible would be people's social habits, such as drinkers, uh, smokers. I see some people at the occasional cigar. Um, okay. Are they 420 friendly? Sure. Um, there are a lot of deal breakers, right? right. So things that don't really go over so well. I know we touched on this last week. Political sure. affiliation has been huge. Mm -hmm. um, that they're mm -hmm. just like, no way, no how, no shape, no form. Um, and I think things are different. This is a different age. I think years ago, that could have been something that could have been flexed or ne negotiable for people. Yeah, or they're flexible on that uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. now to me, it's a clear black and white. I get this. And, and this has been for the past five years when I have had this discussion with people, they're like, hell no. It's either it's kind of Republican. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Or it could so be that's the question. But but come back to it. So I hear what you're saying, but let's talk about height. Right. So you right. have a client, Carrie, you've got a client and she says, I will only talk to men that are six foot two. And like that is factually challenging. Unless, Kara, you have a huge like basketball network, that is not a majority of society. The majority of men in you know the Western world are between five foot eight and six foot tall. That's Do you push back and say, Kimberly, listen, mm -hmm. your partner might check all the other boxes or even come close, and he's six foot, and we can get him a little lift so he puts his shoes. But honestly, honey, isn't that a thing that like isn't that something we could be negotiable on and so like how how do you pressure them like how do you do it yes. politely but also like Kara tell me how I think it is it's it well you have to be honest and very transparent with your clients okay um I this is a true story I had a girl she was from the UK she was 27 she lived in Manhattan her matches had to be six four and taller that was the only criteria. She didn't care. And Caucasian and professional. Oh, she oh well, okay. Space. So not just that. I was, that's, okay, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm yeah. like, and I kept saying politely, okay, I understand that height is important to you. Share with me why it's so important to you. She was 5'3". So I could, it's not like she's a taller lady. I could not you know, for the life of me, I couldn't get it. So one day I just simply said, I think it was probably not the tactful, most tactful thing to say. I said, is this like a, does this have something to do sexually? Like, I don't sure. help me to understand why he has to be six, four. Right. Don't care if he's a crook or a criminal. He just has to be six, four on wall street. Don't care if he's living with his parents so things like that, I think, once again, you'll find that clients are getting in their way. Sure. For the, a lot of clients, it's an ideology about what they feel like their person looks like. Yep. You need to challenge them. Are the, are the physical characteristics more important than, you know, the... Help me out here, Ken. What's um, the word I'm looking for? For uh, the innards, the values, the qualities right, of them, for somebody's like who values, they are. Right. their standards, how they're going right. to treat you, how they're going to make you feel. Is height so important? Like right. you're going to find, you're going to hear a lot of ridiculousness. And, and, but once again, it's an opportunity for you to have a, that deeper conversation with your client. How important is height, Ken? Right. At yeah. the end and of you got to be like transparent about it. Yeah, exactly. It's really interesting. So I think that is something that can be uh, flexed. Somebody's height, somebody's age, um, you know, Christian versus Baptist versus Catholic. Sometimes I've, I've been able to flex religion a lot. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but things that I haven't been able to, once again, are the political, um, sometimes the body type. People okay. have a very clear expectation of what they want their person's body to look like even sure. though i say hey that can change 
Right. <laughs> right. In six months, this person can drop a hundred pounds. So, I mean, once again, just having those deep conversations, how important is hair color, eye color, height at the end of the day? Right. Things that they can't change, things that they can change, right? That's right. Like, Absolutely. I can't change my ethnicity tomorrow, but, like, I could definitely adopt a new religion, which is very interesting, you know? Exactly. Um, interesting. Okay. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to derail us there, but I think you, no, you were no, on matchmaking cadence. Um, but, yeah, so go ahead, Kara. I'm sorry. I'm just, I was just so interested because, you know, as we're going to have a lot of brand new matchmakers who've never done this before, I think they're going right. to hit this situation over and over again. And let me tell you guys, for you that are watching in, you're welcome to comment in things on our YouTube live. Uh, we feature your events here. We'll answer your questions live. So feel free to do that. But also, um, we do have a whole live Discord channel that we use. You can scan the QR code on the screen and you can check out the Discord, the, the Discord channel if you want to learn more and have like live conversations with Kara and I. And one last shameless plug I will say, Kara and I are looking for co-hosts. If you have yeah. some interesting things to say about this, you know, we had a matchmaker tune in last week and tell us all about her relationship with her husband and they have diametrically opposed political views, but they're married. Let's talk about it. How do we approach this? Because as matchmakers, our job is to smooth over the edges, right? Mm -hmm. Because everyone has rough edges, everyone is imperfect. And we have to make both of our clients and our single understand that you both are imperfect. Let's give it a shot. Let's just try. How many Absolutely. bad dates have you been on? Let's try one more just to see if we can try, you know? You miss every shot you don't take. And so how can we, you know, I like the, the, the feeling of curiosity. How can we inspire curiosity in our clients being willing to try? And because all your dates are on voice and video anyway, it's relatively no risk, you know? Right. You do it when it's convenient to you. You can sit on the couch, hang out with them, see if you feel natural. If so, great, go on a real date, go on a physical one. But you don't gotta get dressed up. You don't gotta do hair and makeup. You don't gotta spend money. Just go hang out. And, and, you know, try it. So that's just what I constantly think about when I'm thinking about, like, the matchmaking experience. Yeah, Back to you, Kara. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's great. Good stuff, Ken. So matchmaking cadence. Yes, let's talk about what, it. What would you think matchmaking cadence would mean? Okay, so what I'm thinking is um, I need to get in the rhythm of thinking about how to help my client, right? So... Kara, I'm just going to make some guesses and then you tell me if I'm right. I don't actually know. We didn't even prep this before. Let's just guess. So Kara, um, I get a client named Jack. Jack yes. is a conservative man who's interested yes. in finding, you know, women uh, within five to 10 years of his age. Um, he has a child. So he wants someone who's willing to be, doesn't have to want to be a mother, but has to be willing to like have a child around the house. Right. So, you know, that's actually not my network. And so I have to get into the mindset of Jack I have to start thinking of people that he would like, and then we gotta start t testing it, right? Exactly. So maybe I start figuring out online social circles that are on the conservative side, or maybe single parents, or people who are willing to be kids, or you know, find out more about Jack's interests. Maybe it's fishing, maybe it's line dancing, whatever. I'm making a very clear picture of who I think Jack right, is. Right. You know? No, that's <laughs> excellent. That is exactly what matchmaking cadence is. It's just really. Thank you. <laughs> you have like any drums or something. Um, but just <laughs> getting into oh, no. <laughs> the flow or yeah. getting into, I like get to say my vibes. I get into my yeah. vibes of yeah. this is who I'm matchmaking for. And I really put yes. myself into their personality. Yeah. Um, and then I start searching for their matches. Um, matchmaking cadence also goes back to just having those clear expectations of communications, how often you're going to be communicating with your client, and then the method in which you'll be communicating with them. Got it. You, you want to have a smooth process. The right. smoother it is, the more you communicate, the happier your client's going to be. And you know what that comes with that is referrals. And this is right. all about your business and making money. If you keep your clients happy, I promise you, you won't have to go search your social media for clients. They are going to refer you like crazy. So just keeping everything smooth, keeping your clients happy, seeing what you can do if you do have um, uh, you know, maybe a client that is really difficult. There's reach out to us. Let us know um, yeah. if you've tried to kind of smooth things out and you see that it's not happening. Reach out to other matchmakers. You have a huge community here. Reach out to Ken or even myself. Maybe we'll have some suggestions on um, how to deal with that difficult client. Or I don't know. I had a question for you. This is kind of off script. Hit me, off hit me, Karen. What's up? I had a thought um, the other uh -huh. day. What if we get a client, they've signed up with a matchmaker, right? 
And um, let's say that there's just that ability to build rapport, that connection is not there. They've been sure. working together maybe for two months, um, but the but the client still wants to be part of the matchmaking service. Would mm -hmm. we be able to work within each other as in like matchmakers? Um, how would that we work? Fun. We have some fun comments coming in. Uh, we have our first person proposing if someone else is single. Are you single? <laughs> and who is that for? That must be for you, for Grace. Ken. I hope. I hope we Hi, have Grace. some people who find love on our live YouTube. Right. That's awesome. Welcome, Rosie. <laughs> Hi, Rosie Dolly. So to answer your question, Kara, you know, as you know, we are just starting. So Cupid is brand new. So right. the reason why we are developing things like the Discord chat, where we have right now, I'm looking at 469 people wow. in our Discord community. So these are all matchmakers who have joined us, who signed up through our flow and who are interested in like working together. My best suggestion is you pass them off. The worst thing that's gonna happen to you as a matchmaker is you get a client who has a bad experience with you. And then now currently we don't have a review system for our matchmakers, we will very soon. It'll probably be ready next month, but you'll get a client They'll cancel with you and they'll give you a negative review. That's terrible. And you don't want that. And no one, no one wants that, right? Right, um, right. A great example, Kara, I think we talk about this a lot, but just because I'm gay, like it's such a clear example, right? If I meet a matchmaker, let's say I meet someone, my hairstylist, sit down in their chair, they're a matchmaker. They have a little thing on their mirror that says, talk to me about matchmaking. I'll be like, that's interesting. It's the QR code. Right. Like I, I sign up right there. What a smart way to do this, right? But we start talking about it and my matchmaker is like, oh yeah, I know the perfect little lady for you. You weren't listening, right? And hopefully, Kara, hopefully you, you know, as a matchmaker, my suggestion is always get to know this person before you start because they're your responsibility. You know, once you start and once they're paying you, services are rendered. So right. my suggestion is actually as a matchmaker, be a little choosy. Meet them first. Cupid is made where a, a single can actually schedule a meeting, can talk to the matchmakers first, can schedule a meeting with them to interview them. Don't just take every Tom, Dick, and Harry because if you do that, and you start getting negative reviews, it's going to hurt your business. And right. what's the point, right? Like you want business long term. Cupid is made, um, and if you guys don't know, Cupid is made on a subscription platform. So right. the whole purpose is we're trying to help your clients' whole holistic situation, helping them find that person. Find you know, it's not easy. It takes time. We purposely built it where you do not get paid more if you make successful dates or if you make dates that aren't great because you don't know. Everything's going to be different. People are different. So the whole point here is take some time to get the right clients who you can actually help, who understand you and who you can understand each other. Kara, in the future, I promise you, I have some great ideas as to how you can work with other matchmakers. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, Kara, let's, let me run this by you real quick because we're live and we can talk about okay. it. Um, and if you guys have any questions, those that are watching, please send them in the YouTube chat and we're happy to feature them and then answer any questions. But you Kara, didn't answer I Rosie's question. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Grace is single. Is Grace, Grace single? Like, yeah, Grace, we need to know if you're single. <laughs> and I don't know if Rosie wants to go out with you or wants to help you match make. Who knows? Um, so my question for you, Kara, is here's the solution that I have in my mind. And, you know, one of the coolest things, if you guys don't know, Cupid's a startup. I'm the CEO. I am here with my technological team every week building solutions to your problems as matchmakers. Makes us kind of unique. We're not a Bumble or a Tindle or a Hinge. So our job is actually to hang out with matchmakers and literally take what you tell us and build solutions for that. Exactly. So Kara proposes a really great problem. I have a client, we started working together, it's not working that great, or I'm having trouble matching for them. I mean, I, I, we're just not vibing right. Mm -hmm. So Kara, I don't know if I exactly have a solution, but right now as a matchmaker on Cupid, you really can't use other matchmakers and benefit from you. And the reason why is we are super against becoming a pyramid scheme. Because we're a subscription and our matchmakers are paid 80% of the revenue of our client, right. that's the only way they're being paid right now. We do not want multi-level marketing, you know, you get paid for 30 people in your downline. No, stay out of here. Right. But here's my idea, Kara. I want to hear how you feel. So I'm calling it a bounty system. So hear me out, okay? So Kara, you get Jack. Give me some, tell me about Jack, Kara. Um, Jack is 32. He's single. Mm. He's never been married. He's ready mm. to get married. He oh. was uh, born and raised in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, comes from mm. a very Christian, traditional background. What's a very traditional 
um, lady that is also ready to, to settle down and have children. Great. And so Jack's already signed up with you and Jack subscribed to you. But I will also tell you that Jack has kind of put the pressure on you. He went on two dates. They were fine. But, you know, he wasn't really that interested. But And Jack said, like, hey, don't you have some more for me? And you just found it hard. Like, you know, you've sent Jack first looks. He's turned away a lot of ladies. He hasn't given you a lot of information. So you propose, and you won't call it a bounty to your client. And bounty is just the code name right now. We don't have a great name for this. But basically what you can say to Jack is, hey, Jack, I am personally searching for you. I have a database of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of singles. But Jack, if you know, and when you work with me, you know, you have unlimited dates for X amount per month. Maybe for you, Kara, it's 100. Maybe in the future, it's 300, 500. I don't know. But what you can do is you can work with every other metric with a bounty system. And here's the strategy. Jack says, I am willing to pay $50 per date that comes from a bounty. Now, your subscription still stays online, right? right. But you will get a budget from Jack, and he will have to approve every time. He says, oh, wow, Trish is really amazing. Ooh. But the way you found Trish is, Kara, you take Jack's profile. Once he agrees to that, goes to a much larger group, and it's only matchmakers. And so this is where matchmakers can kind of help on both sides. So you would be like, it's like a realtor, right? You're the sell side. You have to right. your client. And someone else, if they find a single or they meet someone that's a really good fit, or they're like, because, you know, no matter what, we might build some amazing software that can serve up people that might be interesting for Jack, but we still believe sure. humans match humans better than algorithms. Absolutely. And so by having someone else there on the other side, another matchmaker who's like, oh, Trish is so perfect for Jack. Let me send him through. And here's the beauty, Kara. It's always 80-20. So in this situation, with $50, you take it and you cut it into an 80-20. So right. it's $40 for the matchmakers, $10 for Cupid. And that, that $40 is split two ways. 20 to the referral and 20 to the referee. This is something we think we want to do in the future. And right. what that does is that allows us, without being a percentage, without being a pyramid scheme, we are able to leverage every matchmaker in the world. And maybe it's only in certain areas. Maybe you only want to offer this to like people specifically in Cleveland mm. or for matches here, or right. if the match meets these six qualifications, okay. you know, what you're really doing is you're kind of putting out the word, like, help me find this person, right. help me hunt for them because, you know, Cupid's new, but like, we're always trying to bring people from outside, exactly. you know, if they know a friend, they're like, oh my gosh. And you know, th this creates all kinds of complexity. Like the last thing we want is people being paid to, um, you know, start, like, to go on dates. Like, that's the opposite of what we want. Um, so, you know, anyway, that, that's just something that we, we're we really sensitive to. But, Carol, what do you think? How does that sound to you? I think that is a great idea because, I mean, it's still, you, you're able to service your client and fit their needs. And um, it may, you never know by just reaching out to the other other matchmakers and saying, hey, I have this client. Do you have anyone for them? They they may also have a very difficult client that they're looking to match. So it may mm -hmm. be a win-win for both of you. And but I think what's going to happen in the future is some people are going to say, like, I want to spend more on this. And, and we'll see, right? Like, it's going to be really interesting how this works. But right. that's our best suggestion yet. And like, listen, you know, matchmakers who are tuning in, send us, get on Discord and tell us how you feel. I mean, it's an open community for a reason. We want to know how to solve this problem without going down certain paths. We will never be a pyramid scheme. We will never mm -hmm. have a percentage shared system. And that's just something that we are aligned the sand very against because it's uh, we think it's a very dangerous route. And we think a lot of businesses are going that direction and we don't want to be that. Yeah. But we can find intelligent solutions to solve this. Right, Kara? So like- I love it. Yeah. Yeah. We're, and we're trying. We're thinking about it. That's the beauty of being a startup is that there's so much, oh my gosh, there's just a ton that we can do in the future by trial and exactly. error and just learning more um, from the matchmakers about, you know, how you're doing, how you're feeling, what do you need? Um, right. It's it's just going to make it better for everyone. Yeah. And <clears throat> just so everyone that's watching understands, we are open to it. We are waiting for you to tell us about, you know, what do you want and what do you need? As we're talking about this, Kara explained a really great problem. It's our job, the technical side, to solve it. So, um, all right, Kara, I derailed us a really far away, but um, <laughs> do you want to stay in cadence or do you want to hop to the professional boundaries? Um, I think we, unless you have anything else to add to matchmaking cadence, establishing professional boundaries. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk about this 
topic because a lot of matchmakers are single themselves. A lot of people look at profiles and are tempted. Don't do it. Don't mix business. Do not mix business with pleasure. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful. Yeah. Um, Kara, I want to comment on this from like a, a Cupid sure. side. So we are very sensitive to this. So on Cupid, the rule is um, as a matchmaker, you are absolutely expected and you're, you're going to be hunting for, um, for your clients. Here's the way, if you want to be a matchmaker and you want to be single on Cupid at the same time, you have to subscribe to a matchmaker yourself. You have to eat your own dog food. You have to you know, walk your own walk and talk your own talk. If you are going to rely and expect someone else to hire you to help them you know, sift through and kind of like get past their own boundaries, you have to be willing to do the same thing. We do not allow, if you, that we'll, we'll explain it's a really simple process. If you are a matchmaker, who reaches out to someone, starts screening them, and then puts them on a date with yourself, which of course you have the ability to do as a matchmaker, we will know it, and then we will remove you from the platform, and you'll have, on their first infraction, you're gone for a year, all of your clients are gifted to other matchmakers immediately, and then, if it happens again, you're blocked from the platform forever, and because we use a lot of real ID verification, um, and we actually have to check your bank account, and check your ID, and your social security number, we can never pay you again. Right. So, don't mess around. Don't, yeah. you know, on the Cupid platform, respect the fact that we are here to work for our clients. And if you want someone setting you up on dates, absolutely hire a matchmaker as it would make sense, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's bad that I even have to bring that up. But uh, mm -hmm. from experience, it happens a lot, a lot more often than um, you would think. And I've learned that there are matchmakers that become matchmakers just for that reason to be able to hook themselves up. So don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's other than professional boundaries, you know, don't you think when it comes to like Kara, there's so many things. How do we deal with our clients when it comes to like our clients digging in too much and saying like, Oh, well I want to have a call after every date. Well, your client subscribes for a hundred dollars a month. Like your time is not $2 an hour. Like Kara, how do we approach, how do we create like, in like, like, what is it? Uh, to create, I wanted a better word. Uh, I don't want to use the word erect. Um, generate. <laughs> generate. You can, <laughs> you can, can use it. <laughs> uh, it's a construction term, right? right. How do we um, construct those boundaries to remember that, like, we are a real person too? You know, the good and the bad of a subscription is like, there's no limit. You're not charging per hour. And who sure. wants to track those hours anyway? So, how do we approach that at the start, Kara? I think it just goes back to setting up. It's going to go back to your setting up your client expectations. You know, we talked about um, you communicating to them and letting them know how often you will be communicating to them. And, and that mm -hmm. goes with saying, hey, this is the process. Once you have your date, you do your date feedback, you send your date feedback in, then you and I will discuss that. Um, but right. I will reach out to you. So once again, just a uh, setting that, that um, expectation as to when um, things will be dealt with, when you'll talk about your your date uh, feedback with your client. So just letting them know, because otherwise you will spend half your day answering questions that yeah. you could have avoided just by letting them know, setting up that expectation from your first welcome call with your client. That's really, really important. So, Kara, what do I do when my client starts overstepping bounds? Because it's going to happen, right? You know, your client's going to say, like, they're going to hit you up every morning. Okay, how many matches do you have for me today? As mm -hmm. if it's, like, some magical, like, you. they hire you, they wave their wand, and it's possible. Right. And this is where matchmakers, I really want to draw the difference between, like, a, a swipe-based dating app and what Cupid is. Because in a swipe-based dating app, people are trained by these apps to understand yeah. they have to put in work. And so when they're not working, they're not getting results and vice versa. So the expectations are kind of manual, but in yeah. our situation, because a matchmaker is, they subscribe to a matchmaker and then they assume their matchmaker is working out there for them. And they are, uh, right. but you know, they might be type a like me and be like, okay, matchmaker, you know, tell me what you did. What's your report? How many people did you screen? You know, all that crazy. Exactly. Kara, how do I handle that? Um, well, you will have a few people. I, I've had people like that, even though I've set the boundaries and said, okay, Ken, this is when I'll be reaching out to you. You're always going to have a few people who you're going to have to hold their hand. Um, I think, 
I want to say allow it for a while. If it becomes like unreasonable, I get it. But once again, you got to put your your yourself in the position of your client. They're excited, right? Mm -hmm. They they want to know like what are you doing or have you found anybody? And uh just by sending them a, a quick text, hey, I ran a search, I didn't really find anybody that I, you know, felt excited to introduce you to, but I'm still working on it. Communication. Sure. That will uh, nip a lot of the the calls, a lot of the communication of, you know, do you have a match for me or when will you have a match for me or all of that. So yeah, goes back to communication. Communication, right. And then you, you basically, yeah, because, you know, I'm imagining like what we can do on our side. So one of the things, Kara, that we've thought about doing for our matchmakers is like creating analytics. And so... You know, there's two pieces here. As a matchmaker, when you're going through the database, you're filtering. We can right. actually say who you're filtering for. So, like, let's say you have, like, Jack, Teresa, and Kate. So, three different users, right? Three different of your right. clients. So, when you're working for Jack, you actually just pop it over to Jack. And what that does is it creates maybe a timer for you. It right. creates, it understands how many people you've sifted through. So, you're not responsible as a matchmaker to tell them, hey, I reviewed 74 profiles <laughs> last night, Right. Because, you know, they're never going to have this actual transparency, but right. they, you know, Jack can go to your profile and say, oh my gosh, like my matchmaker reviewed this many profiles. They sent me six. So they reviewed, you know, a hundred more. And then right. it was me, Jack, that turned five of them away. And now right. I went on one date and that's how it worked. And so, you know, matchmakers, as you reach these challenges, I want you to keep thinking, if I had X, I would, you know, I would be more effective. If I had analytics that would tell me and tell my client how much work I actually did, that would be great. And it works vice versa because, you know, we at Cupid are really, you know, we're constantly thinking about the success of matchmakers, but we know sometimes they won't be great. Or we need to know when a matchmaker just stops working. And analytics is a great way to do that. So that's something we are considering is like how, and then, you know, you could even set up a report that you send to your clients once a week in the app. And it just says, you know, here's the profiles I reviewed. Here's the ones, you know, just to prove to you, like, and Kara, I see your eyebrows moving. You're like, this sounds great. <laughs> I'm telling you, Ken, because I was like, am I a matchmaker or am I a receptionist? It was that bad by not, oh. because the matchmaker before me did not set up that clear expectation of what sure. was going to happen. And it was just, I walked into a mess. So, um, but yeah, I think that that's a great idea. Yeah, things like that, like just, just keep coming, Kara. We need to hear all these problems because okay. we think that, like, you know, a successful matchmaker is going to do great work. They're going to do a great job. And, like, an easy way to quell that challenge is by delivering first looks. You know, in the Cupid process, it's real simple. Search, screen, select. When you select that person, exactly. you send it to your client. The danger is when you have a client who's snapping their fingers and saying, come on, Kara, deliver. Right. Well, they're humans. We can't that's just right. like, you know, go to the store and mix up some, uh, uh, see, like this one. Right. No, that's not how it works. Like there's, <laughs> there's a limited quantity of people and there are real people out there. That's and absolutely so we, right. We have to be cognizant of that and realize that like, it's not possible across every, every platform. Um, but I yeah. think your all your clients, they, one thing that I always say is, hey, I am not the fastest matchmaker in the world. If you're looking for something, I don't believe in just throwing things up against the wall to see if they're going to mm -hmm. stick. Mm -hmm. I believe in providing you quality over quantity. They sure. will so much appreciate that you're taking your time because they know that you really are looking for somebody that fits all their preferences. You're not just right. giving them uh, a match because they're like, hey, I'm ready for a match. I think... There was a lady two months ago, I had to, I tried to gracefully tell her what I ended up saying to her was the now the best analogy that I can give to you, Nancy, is that this is not build a bear. You can't come to me and tell me, Hey, I want a guy six, five, and I'm going out in the, in the back room and putting them together and then calling you up and saying, here he is. This right. takes time. So quality over quantity, uh, your, even if it takes you a month, six weeks, tell your client that, hey, I really want, really want to just over deliver what you're looking for. It may take me a little more time. Are you okay with that? Most nine times out of the 10, your clients are going to say, hey, take your time. This is important to me. I want to make sure that right. you get it right. So 
goes back to setting up your expectations. Let them know. Give them a, a reasonable time frame as to when they can expect to have their first match. And if you can't deliver that, make sure you communicate to them that you're still searching and that, hey, uh, I, I really want to find somebody that you're going to be excited by. Right. And you're trying, you're doing it out there. That's and right. I promise you matchmakers, like on our side, we are working hard to find technological solutions that make it where you don't have to have this conversation. We right. know you're going to have it. We know it's going to happen early. And people, of course, when anyone's paying for anything, that's the difference now. You know, dating apps have been trained people that you can do it for free and everything is free. But what that also teaches you is they don't care. Like they're not investing into it. And so by trying to create an elevated experience, you have to change the mindset of your customer base and understand that it might take me, you know, I might go through the database and say, there's no one that really fits this. I can send some subpar matches, but I, as Kara, need to go hunt. And so it take me some time to go hunt. I have to get these communities, I have to start inviting, I have to start right. welcoming people to the app and being like, okay, you know, it takes some time to find that person and there's still no guarantee they're going to be a great fit. And right. so that is, that's, that's where it's at. Quality over quantity, anytime. It will go a long, long way. I agree. I agree. All right, Carrie, you ready to move on to effective communication? Effective communication. <laughs> Tell me about it. Try to yell all the time. To, you have to communicate with, I mean, I know this is an app and it's great that Ken has built in all these great unique features that are really going to make your, your jobs as matchmakers easier in the form of communicating, but you got to use it. You got to text your clients. You got to let them know. I like to sometimes... <laughs> I'd like to just um, uh, basically reach out to my clients at the beginning of the week and just say, hey, whatever, happy Monday. I'm searching for you. Just wanted to let you know, have a great week. Something just that yeah. simple will ward off 50 people from calling me like, hey, Kara. Um, so well, it's so nice too. like, it, yeah. you know, it's just nice to be surprised and like say, oh my gosh, my match is like thinking about me and trying. Right. Birthdays. Yeah, like Sometimes a, a, oh. the way that I've gotten a lot of referrals is that for a client's birthday, I will reach out to them and say, happy birthday. I have mm. a free match for you. I've gotten so many free referrals just by giving a free birthday match. Um, Got it. So some other effective communications, if you're not a phone person or a text person, send little text messages, send encouraging notes or articles. Maybe you ran across something over the weekend that made you think of that particular client. How heartwarming would it be that Ken and I just had a discussion? Maybe he knows I'm in the midst of um, looking for a puppy and it's a bull mastiff. Sure. And Ken ran across an article about this great breeder of bull mastiffs. And he sends me this article on Monday morning. That makes me feel like Ken is really, really tuned into me. Got I it. know it's just completely off topic of your matchmaking, but it lets your clients know that you remember them, you know about them, you know, um, I remember that you telling me about you're looking for this dog. So here's an article I thought about you this morning. Yeah. How freaking heartwarming is that? I think it builds trust too, Kara. Because like I, you know, as we understand that matchmaking is not an instantaneous process, we need to trust our matchmaker. We right. have to know, yes, like they're out there working for me. They're listening to what I said. They're, they care. They want to help. You know, they want to help what I'm doing. I, I think that was really like that kind of thing. But also, you know, tips and wisdom, you know, what's working. Or like, here's a story that happened to my other client. I just want you to avoid this pitfall or even yeah. something like that. All of these things, you know, we're all here to get better at dating and to try and be curious and be willing to learn and take risks. And that's just, that's just how it is. Or I would even argue if Cupid has new tools and features that like a matchmaker is going to use, warn the clients about it, you know, things like right. that. But I, right. I think that's, that's a really great tool. One of the many ways to effectively communicate. I love that. And and I found that my my clients really love that as well. Um, so that's something that I will continue to do just as a, a little personal note. That's my little personal I love it. Touch. So yeah. you suggest like, Kara, you think birthday as well. So be like, oh, Kara, actually, this is a really important topic. You know what season we're about to go into, Kara? Um, it mm -hmm. is couple season. Yeah, couples and cuffing season. We have the next four Cuffing months. We have 
Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and Valentine's Day for four mm. months. And that can be, I mean, I can speak personally from like being a single person. It can be an emotional time. Whoa. It can be times when you feel down. So like, do you think as a matchmaker, there are some, is it our job to encourage and keep our, keep folks strong? Like how, how do we do this? How do we navigate a very like personal situation? But also, you know, the, the whole goal, and I want to be clear, guys, like, as matchmakers, you know, I, if I see it happen, I will never be happy to see a matchmaker who is, like, capitalizing on desperation. That's not the goal here. That's what every other platform does. I can tell you, matchmaking companies are well known for creating dating profiles that are fake just to pull people over to their, their like, dating system because they're so ineffective and growing and being, right. like, good matchmaking companies. So that's not the goal here, but we know it's coming. We know Thanksgiving, you sit down at that table, you have your turkey, your green bean casserole, and you have some gravy. And then grandma says, so, wow. <laughs> so, <clears throat> <laughs> pulls out her watch and says, hmm, hmm. You know, <laughs> they're going to say it, Carol. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's a unique flavor. Right of what is it shame it's it's all these things it's you know i'm doing as if as if you have a build a bear in your backyard you're just not using it right you haven't put the one together yet or or maybe you're too full of yourself there's so many things that come with your family and four holidays right thanksgiving christmas new year's and valentine's day so hold up yeah and you're you're the third wheel and you feel so lonely you yeah. know, you you see this holiday coming up, and if you were single, even if you have a matchmaker, like my worry is our matchmakers would feel so pressured to like solve this problem instantaneously. So, like, Kara, what's some effective communication we can leverage coming into cuffing season? Like coming into the next four months being like some of the hardest months of the year. Oh boy, it is a difficult season. And I think even people that aren't single kind of get a little depressed during the the holidays, I think. A little, what do they call it? The seasonal blues or whatever. Yeah. I think just just encouraging your client. Um, I used to say, hey, this time next year, you're gonna be the one hosting uh the New Year's party with your your new guy. So wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Reminding them that you are you're here from for them, reminding them um, you know, why they have a matchmaker and just giving them encouragement. It because it really can be difficult to sit down at the table and everybody's coupled up and you're not. A feeling it's of hard. yes. So encourage them, let them know their worth, encourage right. self-worth, mm-hmm. um, remind them to maybe do things that are healthy, uh, kind of work out, maybe kind of get some of that uh, out of their mind a little bit. Um, but, it, but it is really, really difficult. But just remind them that you uh, are searching and that hopefully this time next year, they're not going to be the third will. Yeah. Nobody and wants I think to it's also, a party and be single. Yeah, I think it's also like really important to just say, you know, let's say, so Cupid's literally launching on October 28th, right? And so we're on the precipice of this season. Four and days. so my fear for a lot of our matchmakers care is they start this and they're like, okay, great. I really want to have a date for Thanksgiving. Are you kidding me? <laughs> let's say, you know, the 28th, we find you three guys. Do you really think you're going to know them well enough to bring them Take to your home. whole family on Thanksgiving? Ooh, not my family. I mean, some that case will, but no. <laughs> Kara, like I'll tell you personally, like I have a hard line. Six months. I need to be dating a man for six months before I'll introduce him to my family. And the reason why is number one, I don't want my family meeting like all the people I try with, and I'm still getting to know. And right, you know, I, I don't know about all all you guys and like. Mass figures, you can definitely chime in and let us know how you feel. But I don't like all my friends and all my connections to meet the person until I'm sure I want to associate our two people, you know, like a brand of like, I had a boyfriend for a very long time named Connor and it was Ken and Connor. And like, that's what everyone referred to us as, which is really good. But that is what like a relationship is. It is fusing your brands, it is fusing your, you know, life. And so my fear is that matchmakers start with Cupid, you know, as we start, we're getting really excited and people are pressuring our matchmakers mm-hmm. 
to solve my Thanksgiving and my Christmas problem. And I'm like, oh, doggy, that's hard. And probably not even appropriate, right? Exactly. Uh, grab a girlfriend or a friend and take him to the party or take him home to Thanksgiving with you. Um, that'll help alleviate a lot of the questions from grandma as to right. your, your biological clock is ticking. When are you going to get married? Mm. When are you bringing somebody home? But right. it can be a lot of pressure because you have other people reminding you that you're right. single. Yeah. And you know, you're not blind to the fact that Hello. you're single. Right? Yeah, like, forget, he's out in the okay? car. He's been out there for the whole hour during Thanksgiving dinner. of just waiting for the right time to bring him in to introduce him to you. I mean. I was making sure grandma wouldn't get too drunk so she wouldn't embarrass herself. You know? Holy like, cow. <laughs> it is like the pressure. Yeah. But it's also the pressure on the matchmakers because. You know, matchmakers, we have to remember, like, our role is a steward or a shepherd in a relationship. We're exactly. trying our best. You know, we're, especially when Cupid's new, you know, we're, there's not an infinite number of people out there. You know, and our clients aren't going to like everyone we send them. And sometimes things will happen that we would have never known. We can screen right. someone and we can check, we can ask them questions, but then we can't ask every question. We can't go on a date with every right. single one of our prospective matches before a client goes on. So, you know, just go easy on yourself, matchmakers, to understand like what's in within your power and what's not within your power, what exactly. you can help and what you can't. You know, just keep that clear in your mind because it can I think I think the next four months are gonna be a really high pressure situation for a lot of people when they're dating. Well, you know, and then spring, so what what season is that supposed to be? Um spring gets easy. Everyone comes out of the woodwork, you know. I don't actually know. <laughs> They've been hibernating all week, all winter, right? Yeah. Kara, I knew when I lived in Chicago, it was easy. Oh, my God. Like, it's really? spring because everyone's been in all year. Oh, you know, they've been yeah, in in the cold. Because y'all don't know, but Karen and I both live in Florida. We actually live in the same town, which is super funny. But, you know, we both live in Florida, and, like, there's no, like, cold season. Like, the other day it was 55, and I put on my Uggs immediately, right? And so I'm Fox, just kidding. I did not. Right? <laughs> no, I did. I'm digging out my sweaters. Oh, my God. Where are my earmuffs? 55. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's freezing for us. But, you know, when I lived in Chicago, I mean, that's six months of your life. Oh, and people get into, like, board games and, like, home house parties and all that. So no one wants to go out anymore. You know, unless you're crazy, you know, 20-something. You don't want to do that. But then as soon as spring comes, oh, my gosh, good luck getting a brunch seat. You better have made reservations. You Every right. party, everything is so full. And I got to tell you, it's kind of nice. But, like, getting through these next four months will be a really big challenge. Um <laughs> You know, and it's seasonal. There's things that happen. Everyone wants to go to like the spring parties and the white parties, and then there's the summer parties, and there, there's everything. You know, it's a right. perpetual seasonal thing. You know. <laughs> All right, Kara. So we've uh, we've covered a lot of topics today. So let's do a quick <laughs> recap on expectation setting. So kind of right. give us a summary of like what did we talk about today from expectations and like what's some some takeaways we should we should focus on. Um, so we talked a lot about just setting up your client, uh, matchmaker expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Letting them know when you're going to communicate, how you're going to communicate with them, making sure that you have built rapport so that you know a lot about them. Um, we also talked a little bit about establishing professional boundaries and keeping it professional with your clients. Don't give out your personal numbers. Don't try to date your clients. It will backfire. 100%. Match, matchmaking cadence, just setting that whole tone, getting into the rhythm. Once you have welcomed your client, you know your client, you feel like you really have a good sense of what they're looking for. Um, just kind of putting yourself in your client's shoes as you are searching and selecting for matches for them. And Kara, because a lot of our matchmakers are like doing this for the first time or it's like a part-time side hustle for them, do you suggest someone like sits down and says, okay, I'm going to put it on my calendar at 6 p.m. until 8 p.m., pour myself a glass of wine and get to work? Is that is that what you suggest? Is it is it intermittent? Like, how do you do it? Well, what I did is I did just that. I blocked myself out a certain amount of time. Okay, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., this is mm -hmm. what I'm focused on. Yes, pour your glass of wine, put your Netflix on, if, yeah. if you can multitask. If not, and don't, um, until you can multitask. Because uh, you won't get your work done. Um, <laughs> just set a designated block of time as to when you're going to dedicate that time to your matchmaking and to your clients because your clients are expecting a match. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last topic we discussed was effective communication, which we talked a lot about. 
a whole lot about. Um, so just <laughs> being honest, being transparent with your clients, always, 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 always. If you're not, that's something that will come back and bite you. Um, you know, don't lie about the matches. Don't lie about the searches. Uh, don't lie about the client. They're going to see the the profile and they're going to see the photo, right? Yeah, right. Um, and just setting, once again, setting up that tone, um, the cadence as to when they expect to hear from you, um, after what series of events will they hear from you, and yep. how you uh, prefer to be communicated with, and your hours that you're available to uh, be communicated with. Right, right. Because the last thing we want is like, you know, many people are looking at Cupid as a part-time side hustle. You know, you get five or six clients that makes you some great extra income, but you're, you have a full nine to five, you know, you have to understand this is not like your full-time job. Um, so Kara, I that's think that's all. awesome. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up today. Can you give okay. us, Kara, I don't know if you've put any, any thought into it, but do you have any hint for what our Wednesday training will be on? Um, I don't have anything yet, but what I'm okay. going to do, I would love for the matchmakers, um, link me on discord. If there's something that you'd like for me to, and Ken to talk about, let yeah. us know if it's something that you would like to talk with us about, yeah. let me know. Cause we'd love to, um, start having guests with us to, to come on and chat a bit. Yeah, I know that we've recently had a whole lot of relationship coaches join Cupid. And y'all, yeah. if you're finding this video, like come join our Discord, please come hang out with us and then we'll welcome you on. You know, we're using a really great streaming platform. You don't need any special software. There's no payment or anything. Just come hang with out, out with us. And like, this is a great way to have like a real forum to discuss these kinds of things. Um, one more special. thing I'll say is every Monday, Wednesday and Friday of this week, we're going to have Kara and I live. But then also at 6 p.m. every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll have me doing live onboarding. So if you're looking to have, you know, a more like handheld ex experience, understand the app. And of course, this Friday, we will be in your app store with both Android and iOS. And so we're going to be talking a lot about changes awesome. and updates and being an effective matchmaker, you know, how to make sure you can possibly win $1,500 with our leaderboard co competition. So much to come. So that, that is awesome. I'm really excited yeah, to see who's going to who's gonna bring that home. Pay some mortgage, right? And Karen, yeah, actually, yeah. I was, at, I was at an event this week with a woman who lives in the villages in Florida, which if you guys don't know what the villages is, is a very large, older community. Yes. And she is the head of her neighborhood association. Her neighborhood association has 25,000 people. <laughs> so she said, you know, if I post this on there, because they all use Facebook, you know, if I post this on there, I'm going to get a thousand signups. Great. We look forward to it. Let's yeah, go. There, I had some clients from the villages and they tend to date amongst themselves. But mm -hmm. there's a Netflix movie on the villages. You'll have to check that out. Let me know what you I think. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Kara. I'll see you Wednesday. Right. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. All and right. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.